In this video, I'm going to talk about this Aorus FO27Q5P, uh, which is a brand new gaming monitor from Gigabyte that has a QD OLED display with 1440p resolution and 500 hertz refresh rate. So uh, it is meant to be the ultimate option for anyone looking for a proper super fast gaming experience that also doesn't sacrifice anything in terms of image quality. So let's see how it performs in all the usual benchmarks, uh, how it compares to some of the other fast monitors we tested so far, and if it's worth getting it or not. Let's begin. In terms of design, this is a slightly different version of uh, what we've seen before from Gigabyte, but it still has that elegant, no-nonsense look with minimal RGB. The base is made of metal and the rest of the stand is very sturdy as well, uh, making this one of the most stable monitors on the market. And uh, even though the looks are always very subjective, this monitor does give a very solid first impression right out of the box. It is fully ergonomic, it is height adjustable, you can tilt it, you can swivel it, and you can even rotate it 90 degrees if you want, but I'm pretty sure most people don't really plan to do that with a super fast OLED like this one. It has a very, very simple form of cable management that works just fine, and you get a great set of connections. One DisplayPort 2.1, one mini DisplayPort 2.1, two HDMI 2.1 connections, another DisplayPort 1.4 connection, a Type-C port, a USB hub with a KVM switch, plus an earphone and a microphone jack. So it is quite unusual to see this many connections on a monitor, but I would say there is still a bit of room for improvement. So personally, uh, I would like to have an internal power supply instead of this external one, and it would be really nice to have higher USB power delivery. So the 18 watts that this monitor offers is maybe enough to charge your phone, but you won't be able to connect and power your laptop with a single cable, uh, which is something that you might want to do with a monitor that offers a KVM switch. Now the OSD is pretty okay. Uh, it is well laid out and very easy to understand. Uh, they could clarify a bit more that the standard profile is basically a display P3 profile, but other than that, there is not much to talk about. Uh, you control it using a little joystick at the base of the monitor, and it all just works well as you would expect from a monitor of this caliber. It has a Samsung QD OLED panel underneath, which is the main difference from the 480 Hz OLED monitors that we've seen until now, that all use the W OLED uh, displays from LG. And the panel itself is flat, which I think is the right choice for a 27 inch monitor. Uh, these QD OLED panels do have a different subpixel layout compared to the uh, W OLED ones. And when you're looking at text or just edges with a lot of contrast, it will show a bit of a green and purple color fringing that might bother some people, but you won't really notice that while gaming. So that shouldn't be a big issue here. And just like other QD OLEDs that we've seen so far, this monitor has a proper glossy coating. Now, whether you should go for a glossy finish or a matte one completely kind of depends on your personal preference. So glossy coating is nice because it makes the colors pop even more and it just gives a stronger first impression, but Glossy panels can also be very annoying if you have strong light sources directly behind or above you because it will reflect everything really well. So both QD OLED and W OLED panels are best used in dark or dimly lit rooms. But let's talk numbers and for testing, I use the Portrait Displays Kalman software combined with the Video Forge Pro 8K. Now the standard profile is calibrated quite well, showing decent results in grayscale tracking, white point and color accuracy as well. An average Delta E of 2.3 is not perfect. Uh, we can see a little bit of oversaturation with the reds, so Gigabyte could tighten it a little bit more, but it is still completely fine right out of the box for pretty much anything you have in mind, including some video or photo editing. The P3 gamut coverage is 99%, so if you want to, you can also calibrate it manually to be even more 
accurate. There is an sRGB profile included as well, which is calibrated a bit better with an average delta E of only 1.4, uh, again, leaning a little bit too much towards the reds. When it comes to brightness, the FO27Q5P is overall a bit brighter than the 480Hz W OLED panels we've seen so far. The W OLEDs offer more brightness in small patches, but drop off more on larger white patches. And uh, with ABL enabled, you end up with around uh, 250 nits on average. Well, this QD OLED panel comes with uh, ABL enabled by default to avoid those brightness shifts and as a result the maximum SDR brightness is only 310 nits but it manages to maintain that even with a full white image so this will feel like a brighter display. In HDR this panel hit a maximum of 1055 nits in its HDR peak 1000 mode, which is also a bit less than the 1255-ish on the W OLED, but in larger, brighter scenes, the QD OLED will be brighter. Uh, you can also choose between a couple of different HDR modes, but the HDR peak 1000 is the one that I would recommend uh, because it has the highest peak brightness and it is well calibrated. So grayscale tracking and EOTF tracking are decent. Uh, color accuracy is great within the gamut limitations of the panel with an average delta E of 1.6. And even in the color match test, uh, which specifically tests some of the hardest colors to reproduce like certain skin tones, it actually held up really well. Since this is an OLED panel after all, with individually lit pixels and no backlight, the contrast is infinite, uh, backlight bleed is not something you need to worry about at all, the viewing angles are excellent and there is no halo effects like you would have with mini LED monitors. So these are some of the best panels in terms of SDR and HDR image quality that you can currently buy. And it is very similar when it comes to gaming too. So all OLEDs are inherently very fast and this panel is no exception to the rule. It has near instant response times with only going from fully white to fully off, taking more than two milliseconds. This panel also has a little bit of a flicker that is also inherent to all OLED panels. So there is a very small brightness dip on every refresh cycle. And keep in mind, most people will never ever notice this flicker, but there is still a very small group of people that are more sensitive to it and might find all OLED panels uncomfortable to look at. Now, when you have a 500 Hertz panel like this one, it is way less noticeable than on a 60 hertz or 120 hertz tv but there is still a very small chance that some people would notice it uh, if we look at latency results the gigabyte is as fast as the sony m10s uh, sharing the first spot in my list so if you're looking for a 500 hertz monitor because you care about gaming a lot uh, this uh, qd oled panel is a great option so the latency is low the response times are near instant the contrast is fantastic, the moving image quality is as good as it gets, and with an OLED panel you don't have to sacrifice anything in terms of general image quality compared to uh, extremely fast TN or IPS panels. And to me, even though there is no way to show this in a 30 FPS YouTube video, the difference between a 500Hz and a 240Hz monitor is definitely something that you can experience. That being said, it is also very important to know that these uh, super high refresh rate panels are meant for esports gamers because a 32 inch 4K 240Hz monitor should cost about the same. And while this one will offer you some extra speed, a larger 32 inch 4K model will offer you more immersion. Uh, you do get G-Sync support and FreeSync support with this one, which is nice to have for games that run a bit slower. But the target audience for this monitor are people that regularly play at or near that 500 Hertz mark and that play games that actually benefit from having a bit more of a competitive edge. So if you mostly play really graphically intense games or uh, you run lower end hardware, you can actually pick up a 240 or 360 Hertz monitor for less money. So I would say these are some of the best panels that you can buy, but whether 500 Hertz will make sense for you uh, really depends on your own use case, on the types of games that you like to play and how much you're willing to spend. 
Now, of course, uh, I do have to mention burn-in today because it is inherent to all OLED panels. Gigabyte does offer a three-year-long warranty that specifically mentions burn-in coverage, which is nowadays becoming a standard. But a long-term panel damage is still something to think about after that warranty expires. Now, if I compare it to the 480 Hertz W OLED from Sony that I reviewed recently, I was actually really hoping to have a clear preference between the two, uh, but in reality, they offer a very similar experience. Now, you can notice some little differences, like the QD OLED being very glossy, and if you look really closely, you can see the uh, different subpixel structure in some cases. But realistically, if you're going to end up buying one or the other, your actual gaming experience is going to be extremely similar, uh, even if you put them side by side. So I think Gigabyte made a very good monitor here. Uh, it is built really well, the design is very appealing, uh, all the required high bandwidth connections are there, and it is calibrated well right out of the box. But those are also the things that we expect to see from pretty much every high-end OLED monitor nowadays. So Gigabyte really needs to make sure that the price makes sense here. Now, I don't really know what the price is going to be, but it shouldn't be much more expensive than other monitors with the same panel. If Gigabyte then makes it more affordable than the competition, and if we consider the numbers that we've seen in this review, it will be really hard not to recommend this one. Now, that is all I have to say about this uh, Aorus FO27 Q5P, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Suzonic and their new Focus GX power supplies. These new mid-range power supplies are pretty affordable, but they still come with all the features you would expect to see on a proper high-end power supply. They are fully modular, they are very efficient and very quiet due to their fan design, plus they come with a hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 30% load. You get a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, and as usual, Suzonic backs it all up with a nice and cozy 10 year long warranty. Check it out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see uh, more content like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss my future videos. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!